Under here. What the gameplay needs to do is immerse you in the world, give you as many interesting actions to survive in this world and overcome obstacles. And obstacles could be infected, it could be other people, it could just be the environment, it could be rushing water, anything that could happen in this post-apocalyptic world. Are you clean? Yeah. But more than anything, it needs to put you in Ellie's shoes, that you're experiencing what Ellie's experiencing, making you feel what she feels. Because the more we do that, the more the emotional beats of the story work for us, and the more they work for us in this very unique way that only works in video games. The gameplay philosophy of The Last of Us Part Two is putting you in the shoes of Ellie and everything that that means. It means giving you a threat constantly, as this world has. It means giving you the hard choices. Because this game takes place in such a hostile universe and our characters are pushed to do really difficult things, we want to put you in alignment with those choices. We want you to understand how hard certain decisions were for these characters, because they're hard for you. I would say the overarching philosophy of how we approached designing the game mechanically is how can we take things to the next, next level. Everything kind of comes out of the story. And how do we do it through systems? So one is you have to feel the pressure of survival survive by the skin of my teeth? How do I use all these, all the scrap around me? Any kind of bullet, any kind of rag, any kind of bottle of alcohol. How do we give you that sense of being a survivor in this world? <laughs> Ellie is very small compared to Joel and more nimble. How do we make you feel like you're not the strongest person in the room, but you still should be able to rise to the challenge and survive, you know, a fight with a bunch of people that are all bigger than you? So therefore it meant creating a character and systems and mechanics that allow you to be much more nimble. And that's where we added um, a jump button. In the first game we had a clamor button, but not really jumping. And here, Ellie can jump. The combat scenarios are much more vertical, where Ellie can use elevation to her advantage. Prone is a huge, huge one. Prone, obviously, it means to lay flat on the ground. Uh, something so simple, again, something that in real life you'd be able to do. Letting the player have access to all their weapons, all the items, crafting, everything, while in that position, and it just, creates so many more emergent uh, things in gameplay. Now that we have this other state that the player could be in, which are very low to the ground, how else can we use this other than just hiding in vegetation? We're like, well, there's a lot of man-made things or different structures that have collapsed that allow just enough space for you to crawl under, which means that now, as enemies are looking for you, you can crawl under things and hide, and it's just one more way to assess your environment and use it to Ellie's advantage. Now, because you can hide under things, we gave the enemies, we made them smarter and gave them the ability to look under things. So while you might hide somewhere and be safe for a while, eventually they're gonna start looking under stuff. And if you're hiding under a truck and they spot you, they're gonna yank you out and then try to kill you. Dodging is a big one because now with dodge, Anytime you're in a you're in a a scuffle, you have a chance to get away. You have a chance to counterattack. It lets escape be an option as well. Sometimes you just gotta run. And that is another part of this world, which is sometimes the threat is so overpowering that you just have to get away. When you are partially hidden or you're like you're in grass, that means people from afar can't see you, but people from closer can kinda see you they will eventually acquire you. You're not completely hidden when you're in grass. She went into the grass. Watch yourself. And it makes you as a player become much more aware of your surroundings. Jump, prone, dodge, you know, all these things feed into both exploration and 
uh, combat because it lets us expand the space. If the size of spaces can be bigger, the intricacy of spaces can be more complex, and it still works exactly as you would expect. So when it came to our level design, we really wanted to challenge ourselves to make a world that really felt like a real space as much as we possibly could and didn't feel like a series of combat encounters and exploration spaces and then combat encounters that felt like a, a hall of horrors or something, um, but something that really felt like a space that you could explore that seemed like a legitimate uh, urban environment. And that pushed us to make our level design uh, even more open than it was in the first game, which for us at the time was, uh, was pretty open. In this game, we've gone so far in making the level design open uh, that there are actually entire story moments, entire combat encounters, like full scripted sequences that you may completely miss. And there are things that we feel like, even though a portion of our player base may never see these things, uh, the fact that when you do encounter them, you feel like you discovered them, it lends them this charm and this magic that I think is unique to games that, you know, this, this happened to me because of what I did and what, the place I explored to. Crafting is very much about a payoff to exploration, meaning that when you enter new spaces, you want to look around for supplies. You want to open drawers and cabinets um, and look for different things that will allow you to craft either items that can help you heal, items that can help you attack multiple enemies at once, such as the Molotov um, or the landmine that Ellie can craft. Items that can help augment your weapons, like the silencer for her pistol, um, or craft new kinds of ammo. It also gives us tons of interesting gameplay choices and overlaps that you can do in any moment and in, in on the fly. We try to be a game that wants you to make a lot of different decisions in combat as possible. And the way that we've expanded the recipe roster and all of the recipes and how they interact with each other is carefully chosen for the different ingredients and making sure that you always have these interesting decisions to make. We put a much stronger emphasis on the importance of the choices you make in the long term for your character. It'll be useful. Through the weapon upgrade system, through the player upgrade system, there aren't enough resources in a single playthrough to fully upgrade your character. The choices that you make, you're gonna have to live with and we wanted to make sure that all of the choices that you made had a really noticeable and tangible effect on the way that you play. You feel a greater kinship with Ellie because you are living with decisions that you've already made. Like you, you are continuing this through line of her journey through this world uh, and the moment to moment gameplay is influenced by that in a way that we haven't before. The realization that your choices have these long-term consequences is very much like the nature of the, the narrative of the game. Uh, and I'm happy that the mechanics are supporting that. PlayStation.